Welcome everybody to Great Day Live. As I said, we are live this morning at the Kentucky Center for African American Heritage here in the Brown Foreman Great Hall with Akram Burton, uh, the uh, executive director here. Thank you so much for hosting us here today Thank and for, for this hour. Yes. Well, as we said, we're here in the Great Hall and it is it's great and it's grand and it's something when you walk in here and I know you just look around and and uh, it's something to take in. Yes, yes, yeah. Yeah, and that's one of the reasons why we have this. Uh, we dedicate this hall to the ancestors, the people who have struggled before us, right? So many of the uh, murals that you see, photographic murals up here of uh, people who have contributed greatly to our struggle as a people. And we hope that people will learn about the culture, you know, and what they have contributed to. Well, the center is like an epicenter of what everybody can learn and kind of set the stage. We're at 18th and Muhammad Ali. Yeah. This is 55,000, is that no, right? 68. 68, 000. even 68. more now, 68,000 right. square feet. Mm -hmm. It is massive. Mm -hmm. And its location is historically significant for what this used to be as mm -hmm. well. Yeah, well, we're located in historic Russell, Russell community. Uh, but we also are located on Muhammad Ali, which is formerly known as Walnut Street. Um, and as many people may know, Walnut Street was rich with history. Um, it was the epicenter for African Americans in Louisville um, in terms of art, culture, but not only just entertainment. Also, we had educators that lived in Russell community. We had uh, all kinds of lawyers, doctors. Uh, so, yeah. And this used to be um, what a trolley. This barn. was a trolley barn. Yeah. In, in 1876, this was built as a trolley barn. And what's important to understand about that is that this area was the area of protest by the African American community, all right, because of the discriminatory laws at that time about us using public transportation. So Mary Cunningham Smith, who's right behind me here, uh, is our Rosa Parks. All right, four years after the abolition of slavery, her and her stepson was denied access to a uh, donkey drawn trolley on 8th and Broadway. Mm -hmm. And uh, she was kicked off. And uh, her and her husband took it to court and won um, in uh, 1873. Mm -hmm. All right, and there were a number of other people that were involved. And the center of that protest took place at Quinn Chapel, which is located on Chestnut Street. Right. Um, we talk a lot about this being a cultural arts center. Mm -hmm. What do you, what is that that you want people to know about that? And why does it make this space and this center so unique? Well, let's just unpack that. So culture, what we're talking about is we want to educate people about their culture because it is our culture that has gotten us to where we are today. Mm -hmm. All right, so, you know, the achievements and all the things that we have accomplished comes out of the culture that we've had, that we've brought with us when we came across that ocean um, uh, uh, when we were enslaved. But also arts, arts is a very important, art plays a very, very important part in our struggle. There's no aspect of the history of our struggle that you won't find art at the center. Um, and so we feel very strongly about that. So we have a number of programs uh, that we offer. We do exhibitions. Uh, we exhibit films, we have theatrical performances, things like that. Right, it's it's so much more of an experience. I think yes. stepping in, um, if you do, when you visit here, is to see exhibits, to see art. Uh, coming up later in the hour, you're going to see a performance, and we're yes. going to explain what that performance is, because there's something about understanding things differently, right, when you, when you see and feel an, a performance. Yes, yes. Well, you know, for us, we have to take all of the tools that we have at our disposal to tell our story, all right? The problem is, is that we have to tell our story. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of people say we need to learn history. Well, I say we need to learn our story, all right? History is someone else's story. Um, and so we use the arts, we use all of the different tools to do that, all right? We encourage people to write, um, we encourage people to do oral histories in their families because those oral histories will help us in the future to put together the stories 
um, and, and tell them correctly. And I feel like over the hour, we're going to be able to take people around to show the current exhibits. Absolutely. Give everybody kind of a snapshot of the, the performances. And I love the look ahead of what's to come here, too, because yeah, there's yeah. so much. I'm sure right now you're thinking of I'm going to do this and this. <laughs> so much more to come here. There's so many things, so many things that I wanted to share with people about what we're doing. Um, we've come a long way, you know, in 1990s, um, we had a group of concerned citizens who wanted to make sure that our history was told. So many of the historic markers that you see around town and also around the state was created by the African American Heritage Foundation. And people were so excited about it that they said, we need to have our own space. Yeah. And that's how this center came about. Uh, so there are many people whose shoulders we stand on right now. Um, the founding director was Celeste Lanier. Mm -hmm. um, she was, uh, you know, a genius in terms of putting this together, all right? So we give homage to her. We give homage to all of the other greats that were in part of, of that process. Well, Akram, thank you so mm -hmm. much. We're going to continue to see you throughout the hour as